Good evening, everybody. Are you happy to be back in the house of the living God? Let's stand to our feet tonight and let's enter his courts with praise. Amen.
Y'all feel like one more? One more? One more? You're about to knock me down with your enthusiasm. I can't hardly take it. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Let me cut these vocals down. Not the vocals. Down a little bit. Blaring in my ear. Check one. Amen. We're going to sing a song. It's a, it's a tough song instrumentally. But uh, instead of giving up on it and quitting on it, we just keep playing Flow with it tonight. This is one of them flow songs. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, We're about to flow. Let's <laughs> play it like that. Help me, church. I'll never be more loved than I am right now. Wasn't holding you up. So there's nothing I can do to let you down Doesn't take a trophy to make you cry I'll never be more loved than I am right now Going through a storm, but I won't go down I hear your voice
him praise in the house. Sister Joy, would you pray as him? Yes, Lord, we thank you once again for this night, Lord, just to come in for the midweek service and Bible study. God, we need this service tonight, Lord. This is my soul-filling station, Lord, and I need this midweek service, God. I couldn't imagine being anywhere else but in your house. Lord, I just lift up the youth groups tonight, God, and ask you to be with each and every one of the teachers, Lord. Help these children learn on the level, Lord, that they can understand. I pray for each and every person in the house tonight and watching online, God, that you would just be with them and take care of them, Lord. Father, we just thank you. We give you praise, honor, and glory, for it all belongs to you, Jesus. Amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand clap. You may be seated. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right, it's good to have everybody here. Can we thank our online audience tonight? Let's thank them for tuning in. Submit your prayer request. Online and in person at this time. Uh, also, there's plenty of ways to give. You can, uh, if you cannot attend, you can give on the website, cfcsandycross.com. Share Faith app, you can give there. And uh, you can also mail it in. But more people are paying online than ever before. And giving is at an all-time high, and we praise the Lord. Hallelujah. In the middle of a pandemic uh, for two years, giving uh, went up. And uh, I've even got people calling me saying, how, how, did, how does that happen? How does that happen? Well, it happens when you trust the Lord, and it happens when you expand your ways in which people can give. Amen? And you, make, you, you cover all your bases that way. And so uh, God's business deserves the best. Amen? God is so much bigger than anybody ever thought that he was. And that's why our, our ministries have to get bigger. Amen? Come on, somebody. You have to widen your, uh, your avenues there because God is just too big to be kept uh, in small, small containers. Uh, stop by our Holy Grounds Cafe on your way out tonight. Pick you up a snack there. It's always open an hour before service. If there's any visitors, turn in your slips. To the Connect Corner after service, and we'll give you a gift. Uh, our Connect Corner can now accept credit cards for your convenience. Kingdom Vision's out there. I hope you've read it. If you've not read it, I really have a problem with you. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Amen. I have people in my family that haven't read it yet, so I don't want <laughs> Hallelujah. But it's on Zulon.com, Amazon, and in stock at our Connect Corner. Amen. Men's Fellowship Lunch is this Sunday right after the service. All men are invited. Amen. And Summer Worship Night Gathering begins Sunday, June 5th at 5 p.m. This is the first and fourth Sunday uh, of the summer nights, uh, summer months, excuse me, June through August, okay? Thanks to all who participated in the public Bible reading last week, amen. Uh, this Sunday, we recognize our May 22, 2022 Servants of the Month, and this past Sunday, we uh, recognized our administrative professionals on Mother's Day nonetheless, and we certainly thank them again, Sister Becky, Suzanne Langley, and Rebecca Langston. Amen. All right, at this time, you can also uh, online be sending in your prayer request. Don't forget to do that, and you can do it here in the room as well. All right, Fusion students can be dismissed at this time. Can we thank our volunteers for sacrificing their time with our kids Let's get into this tonight. Let's turn in our Bibles to Colossians 2. Colossians 2. That's in your New Testament. About midway there. Hallelujah. Colossians chapter 2. We are in a new series. Anybody know what it's called? Double-minded, double-minded. Amen. To invoke higher kingdom standards in our lives, we must further evaluate our own individual lives to ensure selfless hearts and determined minds. Amen? I want my mind to be determined, right? Determined. We've got too many people backing up and backing off, giving out and giving up. We're in a time right now where I believe that more people are under more spiritual attack than they ever have been before. More people are lukewarm than they ever have been before. More people are walking by the wayside like never before. 
Anything that used to be a problem in your life, that used to be a bondage in your life, Christians are finding themselves being tempted by it again and pulled back into the old life like never before. And we've had the church be divided on everything from a, 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 a vaccination to now whether or not to reverse Roe versus Wade. That's where we're at. And I'll say this today to any Christian who has been indoctrinated into the system of this world that doesn't think that Roe versus Wade should be reversed. Guess who you're in agreement with, Christian? Guess who you're in agreement with? And I'm not saying this to be spiritual. I'm saying this because this was on the news. This is apparent. An organization has spoken up and said, please, do not reverse Roe versus Wade. You are attacking our, our religion because our religion requires child sacrifice. The, the North American Satanic Temple. So here it is, and it's all over the place, and I'm glad no more than I look at social media news that I saw it because I said, my God, is the devil not getting real bold? Real bold now. I'm talking about the devil church. They don't try to say we're this. They don't try to say we're that. They don't try to disguise themselves as a Christian denomination. They're out with it. I mean, got the statue of him with the pentagram around, looking like a goat and all the things that the, the, they make the devil look like. And they said, this is violating our religious rights. Yet people are standing outside of a man's house right now threatening him if he keeps pushing it to reverse it. Do you realize that? Not a public place. The man's home, where he lives. The enemy wants to intimidate the righteous, to get us to back off. Oh, I'll back off. I don't want to make no headways. Been like this 50 years. Oh, well. Amen? And I know that it'll come down to the states. I know it won't be officially obliterated, but it will cut it down a whole lot. And the more you can cut it down, the more you can get the curse off this country. Can I get a witness that knows what the Word of God says? That knows that our God hates a prideful heart and the shed blood of the innocent. Amen? You say, well, that's Old Testament law. No, Jesus said, I didn't come to abolish the law. I come to fulfill it. I come to fulfill it. And uh, I said last week, demons are raging. Boom, there's your proof. The satanic church is mad. Amen? Go look it up. Go look it up. So if you're in agreement uh, and you think we should, that, that that law should be left alone, you are in agreement with the satanic church of North America. Amen? That is, that is the deal. So we need to ensure selfless hearts. Selfless hearts. We need to make sure that we don't have selfless hearts we need to ensure, excuse, selfish hearts. We don't need to have selfish hearts. We need to have determined mind. And we must call out and combat against the spiritual warfare that is cast down on our hearts and minds. Amen? And it's like never before. It's heavy right now. I feel the heaviness everywhere I go. Everywhere I go. One of the chief spiritual deficiencies the Bible calls out, in addition to selfish, prideful hearts. We know God despises that, right? What else does God not like? He don't like lukewarm walks. Says it makes him nauseous. No, he actually vomits. Okay? That is another. Now, here's another one he don't like. Being double-minded. Being double-minded. If we are to reach the pinnacle of kingdom living now on earth, then this too must be exposed and conquered. Amen? If I've got a problem I don't know about, I need to know about it. Then once I know about it, I can do something about it, right? That's why when, we, when we're in a, a series called Selfless Church, 
For two months, we were ex examining ourselves. Am I serving? Am I being selfless or selfish? And we're trying to get all that stuff out of us. Well, now we're finding that we also got to make sure that we're not double-minded. And we're going to look at all the different ways that you can be double-minded. And we're going to combat against it. This past Sunday, we kicked off our all-new series called Double-Minded. And in it, we began out of the book of James, which clearly showed how being double-minded will cause instability in our lives as well as wreck our prayer life. James points out how praying and asking God without faith is quite certainly a form of being double-minded. And tonight, as we continue, we will look at another form of it here in our all-new series, Double-Minded. Father, help me tonight as I relay your word from your throne, from your Bible. God, we praise you, we love you, we thank you, we honor you, and we ask you to help us tonight in Jesus' holy name. And the church said, and they gave him a hand clap of praise because he alone is worthy. <laughs> Let's get into it. Colossians 2. Uh, my first focus point is this, rooted in confusion. Rooted in confusion. In this portion of Scripture, the Apostle Paul wrote to the early church in Colossus, that's where the Colossians are from, concerning teachings that were circulating which showcased more of man's traditions than the heart of Christ. We pick it up here in verse 4. Are you with me? It says, Now this I say, lest anyone should deceive you with persuasive words. For though I am absent in the flesh, he wasn't with them at the time, he's somewhere else writing to them. Yet I am with you in spirit, rejoicing to see your good order and the steadfastness of your faith in Christ. He says in verse 6, as you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. As you have received. Amen. That's the first step. And to being a Christian, as you receive him, what are you receiving? You're receiving Christ Jesus the Lord. You're receiving all that he is, and you're receiving all that he has. That's why we can walk in authority. Amen? Not just because we're a Christian, but because Jesus is supposed to be living on the inside of us. And when Jesus, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, is living on the inside of a human being, you're talking about a person that can walk through some fire. Amen. You're talking about a person that can survive valleys. You're talking about a person that knows how to thrive on the mountaintop, but they also know how to thrive in the valley. You're talking about a person that can speak to things that are not yet as though they already were, and they come to pass. You're talking about a person who could petition heaven and their prayers reach the throne of glory. And the throne, good, good God, the grace is poured down from that throne. They walk in protection. They walk in anointing. They walk in authority. Amen? But when we go pushing him out of our lives, when we go turning back to the places that we said we'd never go to again, I'm not saying nobody loses their salvation in that. People make mistakes. They sin and fall short of the glory of God. But you dilute your power. Because the more you put him down, the more stuff you, you push him out with, you're not walking in that authority. We got folks go, walking around saved, but they're not anointed. We got folks walking around saved, but they're not being efficient. We got people who are saved, but they're not powerful. Amen? Hallelujah. He can't just be your problem solver. He has to be your Lord. He has to be welcome to live inside of you. You can't just use him to get out of hell. You need him in this life we live. Hmm. He says, so walk in him. Walk in all that he is. You don't know all that he is? Read the Gospels, Matthew through John. Read everything about it. And walk in that. And look at what he has. Good God, his father owns everything. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Jesus, what did he do when he encountered people? He healed them. He met their need. He spoke encouragement and love. And he didn't turn nobody away. Good God Almighty. But he didn't play around with nobody neither. Amen. He said, I won't, even though I couldn't. 
paraphrasing, even though he could throw a stone because he's the only one that could judge, he chose not to. But then he said, go and sin no more. Because that is what got you in this place that you almost lost your life. These folks almost killed you, girl. Right? Amen. Hallelujah. He says, if you have received Jesus Christ, the Lord, so walk in him. Rooted and built up in him. Right? Not in us. Not in philosophy. Not in your favorite theologian or your favorite TV preacher or your favorite pastor in the community. In Christ. In Christ. Be rooted in him. He's that foundation called the rock, not the sinking sand. So build yourself and root yourself in him and establish in the faith. I've seen a lot of people answer an altar call, be baptized in water, but never get themselves established in the faith. In order to be established, you've got to hang around a while. In order to be established, you've got to get your feet uh, uh, dug in and be ready. Come on, you can't be here today and gone tomorrow. On fire one season and just done and out the next. You've got to hang in there for a while. And then once you get established, you'll get stronger. And once you get stronger, ooh, you'd be amazed at what you can withstand. <laughs> established in the faith as you've been taught. Now, he means as him and everybody he sent to them taught. Not other people that he don't know about that had come in there preaching a different type of message. Okay? He said, but the way we've taught is you need to get established in the faith. The way we've taught, you need to get built up in Christ and rooted in him. He said, and abounding in it with thanksgiving. What does abound mean? To be full of, full of Christ with thanksgiving. What is thanksgiving? It's our approach to God. That is, the, that is the way, that is the manner and the conduct in which we approach God, right? We don't go to God complaining. We don't go to God blaspheming his name. I saw a, a, a series that looked like it was good. It had a good actor that I had liked, liked in it. And uh, it kind of looked a little like, uh, 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 like a modern-day Western type of thing. And I'm not talking about Yellowstone. I'm talking about something else. And the preview, the man is sitting there praying a prayer, and he's cussing at God. I said, you lost me right there. I won't be watching that one. Amen? Telling God how much he don't like how he's doing his job. But he finished with amen. I get that we can get to the point that we don't understand. I get that we can sit back sometimes and say, Lord, have mercy. What in the world is going on? But when you have a kingdom mindset and you have a kingdom vision, you realize that in this world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer because the one who lives inside of you overcame all of this. Right? And no matter what kind of shape we're in, no matter what the economy does, Kingdom people don't suffer in a worldly economy. Come on, somebody. We thrive. We thrive. Hallelujah. Because we get our eyes on the one, hallelujah, that is on the way to bringing us out of this. Amen? I didn't want to say this till last week, and then I had some very reputable people confirm it. Reputable people. And I'm not one to promote TV preachers, but I do, I will say a name if there's never been any kind of slander or con or any kind of uh, scandal, I should say. Like Billy Graham. Never heard any. Always operated his ministry with the utmost integrity. Another one is John Hagee, I believe. I really believe uh, in, in Brother Hagee. And he really believes that things are lining up to the point that World War III has begun. You don't get a world war all of a sudden. It has to gradually build up. And other countries have to start tagging on and getting involved. And he believes that Ukraine is a picture of what will eventually be Israel. And that's when God's going to say, eh. Yeah. Now, as this is going on now, if this be the case, if this be the case, 
The rapture is closer than anybody thought. Even though no man knows the hour but the Father, the rumors of wars and more wars is, is here. It ain't coming. It's here. Right? Earthquake in diverse places. They had an earthquake in Louisiana the other night at a Garth Brooks concert. Never had an earthquake there. They're trying to say that Garth Brooks and his fans made the earthquake happen. There was 100,000 of them in a football stadium. They might have had. But there's earthquakes going on everywhere. Right? Earthquakes in diverse places, all these different things. We got to get ready. That's why the church is so distracted because the enemy wants to distract the church from being ready in the last of the last days. Don't get distracted. Don't get, if you've got to take a break from the 24-hour news, take a break from it. Amen? Turn on some worship music. Turn on a sermon. Get away from it. Whatever you've got to do, but don't get distracted. We're almost home. We're almost home. Amen? Now, if God wants to let us stay here a little longer and build something out here, I'm ready. Amen? Because a word we're going to start saying around this church, starting this Sunday, is expansion. Expansion. Expansion was decided last night. Expansion is on the way. Amen? Can I get a witness in the house? We're about to bust open these walls. Mm. I get excited about stuff like that. I love growth. I love progress. Amen? Hallelujah. Beware, verse 8, lest anyone cheat you through philosophy and empty deceit according to the tradition of man. You know what I call that? Religiosity. I made up that word. Religiosity. Tradition of men according to the basic principles of the world. What is the world? It's an opposing system. An opposing system to what? According to Christ. What's Christ's system? His kingdom. Right? According to the basic principles of the world and not according to Christ. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. And you are complete in him. So if you're not in him or you're without him, you're not complete. Who is the head of all? Somebody say all. all. Principality and power. What is principality? Every spirit, angelic or demonic, he's over it. That's why demons tremble at the sound of his name. Right? He's over every angelic being. The religious rules of man in Christianity at first, derived from Jewish religious leaders. We call them Pharisees, Sadducees, scribes. They were the Sanhedrin Council of, of, of Israel. It first came from them. Then once Jesus came and the early church started, guess what? It got into the early church. And it got into the early church so much that the early church broke off and you had, the, uh, you had Catholicism, which is the Catholic church, and broke off from them was the Protestant church, who said, wait a minute, this is too much like Judaism. We're breaking away, okay? But here's the thing. Religiosity, legalism, it was in Judaism, Catholicism, and now all the Protestant churches, Right? That can cause you to have a double mind. Give me that first teaching point tonight. The religion of man indoctrinates people into being double-minded. It does that. Because the religion of man won't let you, oh, man, what are all the things I've heard before? Especially with the ladies back in the day. Ladies couldn't wear pants. They had to wear long dresses, had to wear long dresses. No jewelry, go ahead, y'all know more than I do. No makeup, all of that, right? Yeah, couldn't cut your hair, real bad on all of that. Um, some, you know, some places, no drums, no band, just a keyboard, or just a piano, just an organ, whatnot, all of these things. And it fell into legalism. Then all of a sudden, I mean, nobody was doing anything. The churches weren't expanding. Nobody was sowing into missions. Nobody was trying to feed the hungry. Nobody was doing those things. 
and you really started to have what I call a selfish church in a lot of ways. And, but the religion of man indoctrinates people into being double-minded. And then what happens is you have something called legalism, and then legalism versus looseness. Because a lot of people that came around preaching against legalism, what they stood for was so loose, all the holiness and the righteousness just went right out the door. And so you'd had the, you had an extreme on this side, and you had an extreme on that side. Legalism. Looseness. Somebody had to come around and preach love. Amen? Preach love and explain what it really means to be saved. What it means to be saved. When I got saved and got on fire for Jesus and went around preaching, I had an elderly person come up to me and ask me, am I saved? They didn't know. They'd sat in church for decades and didn't know because what they were being taught, it wasn't clear to them. They thought they had to obey a bunch of rules and they better not break none of them. And they thought they were saved because they had never took a drop of moonshine they ne- Come on, somebody. They thought they were saved because they never smoked a cigarette and never cussed. Amen. Hallelujah. The religion of man indoctrinates people into being double-minded. Here's the thing. You develop a new nature when you get saved. And come on, that's why you got to be born again. It ain't just about saying a prayer. It's not just about going to an altar. It's about a transformed life. It's about a mind that changes. It's about a mind that gets renewed. And then it's about a life and a relationship that you feed and invest in so you can learn more and more about it. And then when you find out who he really is, guess what you might start doing? You might start shouting. You might start getting excited. You might just start lifting your hands up without a worship leader having to beg you to. After I said that, I prayed with them, and they gave their heart to Jesus right right then. And they left this earth knowing they were saved instead of wondering whether or not they were saved. Amen? Amen. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Where am I at? Amen. Oh, okay. Let's go to the next one. My second focus point that I'm done. Anybody get anything out of this? Watch this. We're going to call this rule-keeping. Versus a new nature. Rule keeping versus a new nature. Old ways, New Testament. Old Testament versus New Testament. Rule keeping is what the Pharisees did. A new nature is what Jesus preached. Right? Hallelujah. It says in verse 11, Paul writes and says, In him who you... In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands, meaning the spiritual equivalent of the heart. The circumcision of the heart by putting off the body of sins of the flesh. What is circumcision? Allowing the cutting away of what we do not need. That spiritually happens to the heart. Cut away what I don't need. I don't need this bitterness no more. I don't need this hatred. I don't need this unforgiveness. I don't need this malice. I don't need this negativity. I don't need this ill will. Come on, somebody. I don't need this pain. I don't need this anxiety. I don't need this depression. I don't need this bondage. I don't need this addiction anymore. Cut it away from my heart, God. Hallelujah. By the circumcision of Christ, verse 12, buried with him in baptism. That's what baptism Reflects, right? Being buried and rose again. Old person going down, new person coming up. 
by the circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism, in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God. The real you rose up when you finally figured out who God is and what he has done in your life, and you start walking in that. Because before that, you were a dead man, dead woman walking. Right? Dead man walking, slave to sin. I want to know about being born again. Amen. Tell me about being born again. Because trying to keep these rules ain't getting me nowhere. I'm still miserable. Guess what? I couldn't do it. I tried not to lie and I lied. Right? I did cheat and have an affair. But then I heard Jesus said, if you even look on a woman with lust, You've committed adultery in your heart. Every man that ever heard that scripture said, oh. What was Jesus saying? This law goes deeper than you think. It's a matter of your heart. You've got to change. You've got to be born again. You can't keep those laws. That's why those laws condemn you. That's why those laws bear down on you. That's why those laws and the people who preach that and live that think that you ain't nothing and you ain't worthy to even go to their church or even sit beside them. They were wrong. They need to get born again because the power of the law broke. Why? My new... My new nature, it doesn't want to sin. My new nature doesn't want to go back into bondage. My new nature doesn't want to be addicted to anything that can destroy me. My new nature don't want to hate people. My new nature. Does that mean I break the law anytime I want? No, but I'm not living trying to see what I can get away with either. I'm not trying to find scriptures to excuse my behavior. I'm not trying to find scriptures to please my flesh. Good God, I tried to have a quiet little Bible study with y'all folks. The more y'all smile, the more I want to preach. Hmm. Hallelujah. Another shower when I get home. He says, buried with him in baptism. You are also raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. God raised his son up. He's going to raise you up. You're his child too. And you being dead in your trespasses, your mistakes, you're dead to them. I know what they did to my life and I don't want to be in those. The enemy may try to take you back to him. He may have taken you back to him many times. Kill it again. Kill it again. Come on, somebody. If a snake was getting up on your porch and you took a whack at him with that rake or that hoe and he didn't die, what would you do? Would you back up and say, I'm going to show this snake grace? No. You'd keep chopping and chopping till he was dead. Right? We got to chop away at those addictions. We got to chop away at those bondages. We got to chop away at those religious mindsets. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, meaning you don't have a heart that's been cut away at, the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him. Meaning your flesh doesn't, the, uncircum, the uncircumcision of your flesh, meaning your flesh don't have covenant. Right? Why? Is the flesh saved? My flesh can still go out and do what it did before I became a Christian. I could go out and totally wreck my life by midnight tonight. How many know that? When I say this thing that I'm, in, I'm having a new nature and the law doesn't condemn me anymore, that don't mean that I am not susceptible to sin. You know why? I have a, my spirit has a new nature, but my flesh still has an old nature called sin nature sin nature is a part of our flesh and it's been that way since the garden of eden when they chose what the enemy had to offer rather than what god was already blessing them with and it was worse than coronavirus worse than polio it was a pandemic that god despises 
because man chose it over him. But thank God he sent Jesus to wipe it away. You being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven all trespasses. Not some, all of them. Having, somebody say it with me, wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us. Now, what's the handwriting of requirements that was against us? Many would say the law. Quite frankly, yes. But here's why I don't think he's talking about God's original law. Because he's saying, wiped out. And Jesus said, I did not come to abolish the law, but I came to fulfill it. What Jesus didn't come to fulfill is all the laws that the Pharisees added to it. That's legalism. That's religiosity. He said, he said, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it. To the cross. What did he nail to the cross? The charge of my sin. Sin has to have, you've got to pay for sin. Right? Just like a parking ticket or a speeding ticket. Guess what? You've got to pay for that. Try not paying for it and see what happens. Right? Come on, somebody. They'll treat you like you robbed a bank. A penalty has to be paid. There's a charge for that, right? We had a charge for sin. Jesus took it and nailed it to the cross and paid for it forever. That's how important of a thing he did that day. He has taken it out of the way. He's nailed it to the cross. Verse 15, having disarmed principalities. That's demonic powers. And powers he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them in it. Here, here's what I believe, and Mel Gibson actually showed this in The Passion of the Christ. How many have seen The Passion of the Christ? Amen. Anybody, every, every single person in here. Um, when Jesus took his last Brit, uh, Brit on the cross, did you see the part of the person that was playing Satan cried out? I believe that. How many believe that? Amen. The veil tore from the top to the bottom. It was so tall in that temple, nobody could have hopped up there real quick. Somebody could have started tearing it from the bottom, and somebody else could have got on the other side and tore it. But God did it in such a way so nobody else could get credit for tearing that veil open and saying, what was God saying? I have made a way for my children to finally come straight to me. You don't have to intercede through no man. You ain't got, come on. You ain't got to be, come on. You don't have to go sit and have a priest talk to me for you because I'm making you a priest. Amen? All right. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing, triumphing over them in it. Every demon was crying out. Oh, my God. I thought we got rid of him. No. Verse 16, so let no one judge you in food or in drink or regarding a festival or a new moon or Sabbaths, which are a shadow of things to come, but the substance is of Christ. Don't get caught up in all these things. Amen? Don't worry about it. You want to go eat barbecue, go eat it. Right? Don't eat too much of it. It'll cause you some problems. But back then, they were, they, were, they were so obsessed with everything they were putting in their mouth. And Jesus said, it's not what goes in a man's mouth that makes him unclean. It's what comes out of his mouth that shows he's unclean. Right? Hallelujah. All right. No one judge you in that way. Verse 18, let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility, disingenuous, and the worship of angels. That was one of the false teachings that was going on, going on at that time. They were worshiping angels, praying to angels. Let me tell you, angels are subject to us. It says we'll rule over them. Amen? Hallelujah. We'll rule over them. They are God's military. We are his family. Amen? That is his military, an angelic army. We are his family. We are his children. And the worship of angels, which was a false teaching, intruding into those things which he has not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding fast to the head, which is Christ, from all 
from whom all the body nourished and knit together by joints and ligaments grows with the increase that is from God. For too long, folks were told what rules to uphold, and they were taught to be disciplined through human ability, which took all the credit off of Christ, whom we need more than we need good conduct. And people were trying with their own human ability to fight off sin. They were trying to be disciplined enough. If I just discipline myself, if I just don't do it, everything will be okay. Yeah, but the problem is your heart still wants to. So you're not delivered. That's not freedom. The alcoholic is not free if he wants to drink every day. And man-made rehabilitation says if you're an alcoholic, you always will be. But the Bible says we're a new creation through Christ Jesus. That means we have a new nature. But legalism says, oh, well, if you do that and then you go off and go get drunk again and you do this and do that, then you're not a Christian anymore. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? Amen? You fall off. You make a mistake. You ask him to forgive you. You repent. Repent is not saying I'm sorry. That's an apology. Repent is to turn away from whatever is besetting you. If it's alcohol, if it's drugs, if it's pornography, whatever it is, and you turn from it. But you don't have a God that's ready to see you mess up. You don't have a God who's sitting back with an I gotcha mentality all the time. Come on, somebody. Does God hate sin? Yes, but he loves you. And the reason he sent Jesus is because what he hated, sin, got inside of what he loved, you and I. Amen? And God said, I'm not having that. I'm not having what I love be contaminated by what I hate. Amen? So I'm going to shed some perfect blood, some spotless blood that will pay for it forever. Then all anybody's got to ever do is not trust in their own human ability, but trust in my son. Amen? And when you're trusting in him and you're putting him above yourself, good God, and saying, good, I can't stay away from this stuff unless God helps me. I can't stay away from this stuff unless Jesus helps me. When Jesus sees you choose him over it, he will help you get over it. He wants to be chosen. He wants to be chosen. I can't, we can't be disciplined enough. We can't be. And the moment you think you are, watch what hits your life. Watch the rejection that hits your life. And because you got rejected, now you want to be rebellious. Ah, I deserve this. Right? All of a sudden, you find yourself back in the very place you never said you'd go again but God. He brought you out before. He's going to bring you out again. Amen? Quit letting man and legalism make you think you're one and done. Amen? Quit letting legalism make you think three strikes, you're out. Now, you, Daniel, you want everybody to go out and sin and then ask for No, I'm not. I want people to quit beating themselves up and think that they're not. That's why people quit coming to church. Because when they see that they can't live it perfectly, they say, well, what's the point? What's the point is you don't give up. You keep coming into the doctor. Come on. Have you given up on your doctor yet? No. You go see him every time you've got a problem in your body. Well, why have you given up on the Lord? Lord have mercy. Got to, I done been at the house too much. I done let out a wild man tonight. Verse 20. Therefore, if you died with Christ from the basic principles of the world, Everything in the world, Jesus took to the cross. If, he was, if it was dead to him and he's in us and we're all about him, I'm talking to myself too now. It's got to start being dead to us too. Dead. Hey, you want to go do this and go do that? No, nah, I can't do that. that. That's dead. I can't pick that up again. It's dead. Well, it's alive with him and it's alive with her. That's them. Amen? They'll, come on. They, that's, that's their life. i got to look out for me. 
I have to make the choices and decisions for my life. Amen? And if there's death on it, I don't want nothing to do with death. Amen? In fact, Jesus, the one that lives in me, he defeated death. So what in the world do I need to go play with it for? Basic principles of the world. Why, as though living in the world, do you subject yourselves to regulations? Why are, are you so worried about every little thing? Do not touch. Do not taste. Do not handle. They were tore all to pieces all the time because they would go to places and there would be meat served to them that was left over from an animal that had been sacrificed to pagan gods. And Paul didn't always know that. But if Paul was hungry, he ate. Because he said it's what, same thing Jesus said, it's what comes out of your mouth, right, that makes you unclean, makes you dirty, not what goes in. Paul didn't have time to find out where that, you know, what had happened. He said, don't beat yourself up about it. Don't send yourself to hell over it. Don't worry about, uh, I can't do this, I can't do that. You know your heart. I'm not trying to eat meat that was sacrificed to an idol. I'm hungry, right? Hallelujah. He says in this, he says, do not touch, do not taste, do not handle, which all concerns things which perish with the using. These things die. They're not forever. According to the commandments and doctrines of men, these things indeed have an appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion. It sounds good. I cannot eat barbecue. Why? Because it's full of cholesterol? No. It's against my religion. Amen. It ain't against mine. Or though we were going to cook a pig for the men's fellowship. Hallelujah. Amen. People were worried so much about that. Self-imposed religion, false humility, and neglect of the body, but are of no value against the indulgence of the flesh. In other words, unless your heart changes for Christ, none of the rest of you will. When you agonize in the task of disciplining yourself from certain things, it's because you still desire them. And you're not allowing yourself, you're not allowing your thinking to truly change to reflect a new nature. Right? I don't care if you've been a Christian for 50 years. You can fall tonight. Amen? You can fall tonight. But all you got to do is start investing back in the new nature. Man, I done slipped into the old nature, the old mindset. You think you can't do it. Oh, you let some, come on, you let some think. You let the devil attack you. You let something unfair happen to you. You let a lie be told on you. All of a sudden, you're going to come out of your new nature for a minute. Some will. But you're not condemned. Because you can go back to that new nature. Let me give you this last teaching point and then I'm done. Watch this. When you're actively embracing your new nature, you'll never be condemned by the old one. So that's really what we need to do. I'm not saying that everybody that gets attacked is going to always default back to sin, default back to worldly behavior, bad conduct. Here's what you do. Keep embracing your new nature. Keep embracing Jesus. Keep on embracing Jesus. You'll never be condemned by the old one. I saw a preacher today talking who had made a public mistake, and he apologized for it. And even though he apologized for it, he, would, he received so much hate mail, he even received death threats, that he was going to quit the ministry. And he was fine with it. He lost, uh, he had a, a, a global television ministry. He lost $40,000 a, a month in financial support from people that didn't believe in him anymore simply because he apologized for being wrong about a prophecy he told. He missed it. He got it wrong. I don't think he was wrong. I think the devil got in there and rearranged some things. But what I'm here to say is that he could have given up. He could have let the attacks and the persecution that he was receiving from people who were supposed to be Christians, he could have let it cause him to stop and quit. He could have got rebellious. He could have started hating people. He could have started being mad at God. Why are you letting this happen to me? But instead, he pressed in. He didn't give up. And God has started to restore him. Right? God said, you know, I want you to prepare my church for the end times. 
A lot of times we don't ever want to give the man of God another chance. We don't want to give the woman of God another chance. Always remember this. Pastors and first ladies are a part of the congregation too. Right? Everybody deserves the opportunity that the New Testament gives for somebody to be restored. Right? You restore them. We don't give up on people. You don't give up on people because they messed up. Legalism will do that. Religion will do that. It will leave you hanging high and dry. But a relationship with Christ is what we need. But here's the thing. When you're actively embracing your new nature, you'll never be condemned by the old one. So if I don't want the old one to condemn me, to mess up my reputation, to cause people to think less of me, then I have got to embrace my new nature that I have been blessed with through the born-again Christianity that I have in Christ Jesus. Amen. As I close tonight, legalism is when we put religious rules over a righteous relationship. Write that down. I think it's pretty good because it's a good explanation of legalism. Legalism is when we put religious rule over a right relationship with Christ. It's literally being double-minded. Religious people, over, over religious people suffer from being double-minded. It's not just a lack of faith. It can be a legalistic approach to Christianity. It can be a religious mindset. It can be all kinds of things. It, it can be, but we know that. We're going to look in this Bible, y'all, and we're going to find everything that the Bible says can cause you to be double-minded. And we're going to make you aware of it so you can do something about it. Amen? So we know we don't want to walk around with a lack of faith. If I'm praying, I want my prayers to hit. Amen? And I don't want to get caught up in religious rules and forget to love people and forget that God's not a dictator. He's a heavenly father that loves me. He's a king, and I'm a child of that king. Amen? Anybody get anything out of this teaching tonight? Hope I didn't go too long. Woo. Is anybody online right now? Let's get some amens out there online. Let's get ready for some prayers, and then we're going to close it out. Real quick. We want to be remembering Debbie Barefoot. This is Gina's sister. Hallelujah. She uh, is getting ready to have surgery. Oh, she's had it on her. Amen. Amen. She's in the hospital. We'll be lifting her up. Connie Williams. This is... Uh, uh, Billy Joe, uh, this sister, is on hosti- hospice. She's Billy Joe's mom's sister. Billy Joe's mom, okay. All right, and also remember Sister Lily. She had surgery on Monday. She came home yesterday. I called Pastor Jerry today to check on her, and he said she's doing wonderful. Instead of needing three uh, rehab treatments a week, she only needs two. So she's doing really good and that's what we prayed for in the <laughs> surgery room with her the other day. Man, uh, Joy Meadows is asking for prayer. The Lawson family from West Virginia, their son Travis was killed. Amen. How old was he, Sister Joy? Early 20s. Gone way, way, way too soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's believe tonight. Call on God for these requests tonight. Amen. Stretch your hands in this direction in faith. Father, we come tonight and we're lifting up these requests, Lord God, those that's been in surgery, those that are in the hospital, those that have lost uh, this young man, God, too soon. God, we lift them up. Lord, we, we just thank you and praise you for Sister Lily's recovery. And God, we just thank you for her progress. Father, I thank you for healing the bed sores on my father. And Lord God, I thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> that he's still smiling, still talking, and still looking forward to a country ham biscuit every morning. Hallelujah. God, I praise you for him right now, and I thank you for this wonderful church family that's been praying for him. God, I thank you for what you're doing for him, and I thank you how you have empowered us to serve you by serving him. Lord, we love you. We thank you. 
in Jesus' holy name. And the church said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I do. Um, caregiving, first time I've ever been a part of it. And it truly is the Lord's work. And God will help you do it. Amen. He will help you through it. And uh, it's something that a lot of people don't get a chance to do for their loved one. If their loved one is uh, suddenly killed. Uh, but I appreciate this. And I thank God for Kingdom Vision that helped me to see it that way. Because my flesh didn't want to. My flesh wants to be mad, disappointed. Uh, especially when you got doors shut in your face that you felt like should have been open. Amen. But God has a plan. And I am seeing that plan unfold. So I challenge everybody here today, don't let anybody get sick before you start taking care of them. Amen. Go ahead and start caring for them now and loving them and serving them now. Amen. We're not promised tomorrow. I want to thank everybody for tuning in tonight. Can we thank our online audience? If you're in driving distance, come and see us this Sunday at 10 o'clock. We're going to have more of this series. Amen. Thank y'all online. Does anybody else need prayer? Hey everybody, Pastor Daniel Parker here with Assistant Pastor Tim Hall thanking you for tuning in this week and watching this live stream broadcast. Or if you're watching it recorded later on, we thank you. We want you to share it with everybody that you can. Hit like. Tell us something in the comments if we're reaching you. And if you're in driving distance, we would love to have you right here at Christian Fellowship Church on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. Come early for coffee and fellowship, and then we're going to have some of the best praise and worship music you'll hear anywhere and series preaching straight from the Word of God. And then on Wednesday nights, we have our weekly Bible study at 7 p.m., and we got all kinds of things going on Sunday evenings, life groups, men's and ladies fellowship, as well as our all-new Kingdom Couples marriage ministry we love you we want you to to sow into the church be a part of the church come on we love you if you got saved today you accepted jesus christ into your heart then we want you to message us right here on our page and we will call and pray for you again thank you for tuning in today pastor tim what say you to the wonderful people out there that's tuned in today we pray if this message has reached you because we're all about kingdom vision amen come see us well, you, we got a seat just for you. We love you. We thank you. And just continue to keep your faith in God's unchanging hand. And we enjoyed you. God bless you. Thank you so much. God bless.